Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Entrepreneur Middle East. We're here at the DCDE booth having some spectacular interviews the whole day at Expand North Star. And with me up next, I have Hala Dalawali. He is the CEO and founder of Ramal. Such a pleasure having you over and thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. How's everything? Uh, it's been uh, well, as I we were discussing, it's busy, but that good type of busy. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. So how have your participation here at Expand North Star been? New people, new opportunities. Yes, yes. yes. I mean, uh, first and foremost, you know, Sheikh Hamza Arabi Alameen. I mean, we are here uh, thanks to Dubai Chamber of Digital Economy to 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 have us, and we can discuss more about our actual participation this year. Um, but yeah, it's been great. Met many different people, many different new insights and connections. So right. as you know, it's it's very nice to see all the diverse uh, people coming up. All over here and just meeting at this event. So Amazing. it's really nice. Amazing. So tell me a little bit about the company before we open up sure. these special boxes. What is it that you do? So at Ramal, we create hardware. Uh, and with our own hardware that we design and build, we uh, educate and teach others how to build upon that hardware. And that same hardware is used across different industries mm -hmm. in education, in let's say agriculture, in uh, artistic projects, um, in uh, industrial applications. So the applications of these pieces of hardware is very versatile. Uh, and our foundation is we teach people how to program and then they can go and make their own companies based on our hardware. I mean, it might not make too much sense, but I mean, as, as I explain more and you see it, then kind of, I guess, hopefully click. No, of course yeah. it will, it will. And I was actually having an interview not a while ago with also an IT nerd, and he was telling me how there's actually three layers, you know, you have the hardware and the software, and then that you build upon it, right? So this is the base. We Yes, we are at the uh, directly, I guess, the marriage of both hardware and software. Okay. So we design this hardware and then we put the software over it. So we are, you know, at the low level of building the foundation. Amazing, yeah. amazing. So now we have all these special boxes here. If you can open it up and tell us what is inside. Sure. So thanks to the Dubai Chamber of Digital Economy. Um, this is, let's start with the small box. So the small box contains, uh, I just, hopefully it doesn't drop. So it has our uh, piece of hardware called Shabaka. The idea of Shabaka is connectivity. Shabaka in Arabic translates to web. So this board supports Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections. So people can use them in a variety of projects that require devices to talk to each other, talk to the internet, send information. So as you can see here, that even has the uh, design of a spider web. So that's the idea of Shabaka. Incredible. Um, so, uh, I, I mean, another, I mean, how would somebody use this is you would plug exactly, this in. Exactly, like where would we exactly plug this in? So this would be, um, in your, for example, uh, you would plug this into your laptop, you would program it, program it to do different things. For example, we've have we've had artists uh, use this piece of hardware to control their installations. I mean, if you've been to Sikka or other art events, the, I mean, you won't see it up front, it's in the back end, controlling all the motors and sensors and lights for different artworks. So that's one use case. I mean, the foundational use case is education. We teach people how to program on these things, and then they go build their own things. Another use case is, um, I personally use it at our farm, at our house. We have, you know, these... these you have uh, a farm? Yeah. Amazing. So we, at our farm, we use this to control gates. So our farm or the, the door there is not smart. It's just a regular door with, with a remote. However, okay, I want my friends to come in and they don't have the remote and I don't want to go all the way to the gate to open the Yeah, remote. okay. So I programmed one of these devices to control the gate. So now when my friends come, I just tell them to download an app. I give them the access code. They open the no gate. way. Yeah, yeah. So the use cases are varied. That's and, incredible. And uh, yeah, and that people have used not this exact one, but another product of ours in smart agricultural projects. So they have a smart agricultural system where it, the you know they read the moisture level, they read the humidity, they read the temperature, and then they can decide whether to water the crops or not. So the same base can be used in a variety of applications. That's the entire point of Ramal. Um, and I can tell you more about the origins of Ramal. But Go for it. <laughs> but you know, it's crazy that it can be adapted to so many things. You know, first you've said it about your house, which the first thing that came to my head was if you can use it for security purposes, that's such an incredible market to tap into. I agree. But there's so many more when it comes to agriculture, especially here. We want to develop that sector, I think, here in the UAE. Exactly. And we provide the platform to, I mean, it's not the, the full solution, but at least the foundation for yeah. you to go and expand and do more and eventually build your own unique piece of hardware. Um, and then this is the other uh, the VIP gift box here by Dubai nice. Chambers and I'd like to again thank them. So, I mean, you have, I mean. Wow, beautiful. Um, so they have an artwork made of sand and our company name is Ramal. And Ramal translates to sand. And uh, okay. there is, yeah, so there is, uh, hopefully this doesn't fall. So they get uh, this nice. How uh, come board. you decided to name it Ramal? 
Uh, so it was called Ramal because of. Uh, let me just put this back because it's heavy. I don't want it to fall. Uh, Are you sure people can't copy your idea if it stands like this? Actually, this is open source, meaning <laughs> I want people to copy the idea because we. I, I've noticed this idea. So let me just jump back to the story. Uh, okay, I'll ask you, so first, why Ramal? Ramal is, uh, again, it's sand. So there are uh, at least three major reasons why I call this Ramal. First, the components that you see on this piece uh, uh, device, you know, these um, the ICs, they're made from silicon, and silicon is found in sand. So that's the first idea of, okay, why do we use Ramal? Second thing is, uh, part of the process, when I build these boards, it might sound very weird, but I actually use sand, you know, sand from the desert, to actually build these these boards, you might ask how. So long story short, I mean, it's on the website. You can, yeah, long story short, um, these components when we assemble them, um, they need to be heated up, and it's called in the process called reflowing. So when I get the board, I put the components with a special paste, and then I place it on a skillet or like a. It could be anything. It's just something that heats up. And I use sand specifically because sand holds the heat and distributes it, distributes it evenly. So I actually built a lot of my boards using mm -hmm. you know, sand from the desert. And uh, yeah, so that's why it's called Ramal. And then the last reason is I love the desert. I always go to the, to the desert and I enjoy our desert. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's really nice to have that, that connection of, of culture and technology combined. 100%, no, beautiful. Tell us, how to, why did you make Ramal? So... Why was Ramal made? So uh, I was studying in the U.S. at the University of Colorado Boulder. Uh, be, nearing graduation, uh, I worked on a previous startup. I just wanted to make something with a, with a friend of mine. And my grandfather called me, and he was just discussing things with me. And he told me, you know, we have an issue at our farm. We have these insects called the red palm weevil that eats the palm trees from the inside. And before you know it, the palm tree falls and dies. So it, it was an issue. And then I was thinking, you know, maybe I can make something to, to help my grandfather. Um, then, uh, when I returned back to the UAE, it was a very initial idea. It didn't really work or make something yet. Mm -hmm. I realized, you know what? I don't have the parts I need. I don't have the components I need. I don't have the skilled individuals I need to make this a reality. I thought, you know what? Let me step back. Instead of me building a final solution, Alhamdulillah, with the knowledge I, I, I learned in the US thanks to the sponsorship of the government, uh, and you know, the, uh, the knowledge I have, I don't want to just to keep it to myself. Let me help others. So then I decided to build the foundation, which is Ramal. And Ramal, the entire point of what we do is we educate and teach others how to build their own solutions. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so I saw notes a gap in the market, and that led me to, you know what, let me teach others how to build their own solutions. And, uh, yeah, currently we work with many universities, uh, education institutions, government institutions, and what we offer is workshops, custom workshops based on what they need. We have... X number of people, they need to learn about this or we want them to learn about these things and we provide a tailored solution for you know what they want to do. No, but it's amazing because I feel like so many times education is missing, you know? Yes. The, the founders can have the best products in the world, but if you cannot adapt the product, what do you do with it, you know? And yes. that's where before you even come up with your marketing and sales pitch, you need to make sure that your audience that's targeted is well educated on what is it that you have so it's I, super important that you have this part i think in the company i agree i agree i mean it's not always difficult I mean, if i show someone randomly what this does <laughs> and i know it's, it's not easy to explain but you know that's why our core target is we want to educate so this doesn't seem too foreign to you yeah i mean like i mean as i said they, or at they, least explain where i can use it exactly you know like where i can adapt like artists, it to. i'm surprised you know so artists the most recent one is uh her, her name is tala and she has an exhibition and uh she, she comes not from a programming background, but she learned how to use these things. She, she told me that it feels very approachable. And, uh, you know, all kudos to her. She did all the work. But she used the Ramal board to make her artwork come to life. And I, I wish I can show you, but it, it's basically a moving platform that moves and generates new random patterns based on, you know, the movement. And the movement is controlled by the Ramal board, which is incredible. Good to see. Incredible. And I love that you entered the creative field. Now, listen, you've you've told me all about the technicalities of sure, your product. Sure, yes. I want to enter a little bit your mindset as sure. an entrepreneur. Um, because I see you're extremely, you know, confident and uh risk-taking and as well as this resilience. So it's really, I think I'm gonna our audience is gonna be very much interested in what's the mindset that you have behind all of this. Sure. So I have a couple of founder mindset and growth questions. First one for you is what's the hardest decision that you've made as an entrepreneur? Uh, there is not a single one hard decision, but it was, um, I mean, being an entrepreneur is, is challenging. I mean, I tell people that everyone comes from different backgrounds, different, uh, you know, access to different things. Um, 
and I guess you know not everyone is on the same level level field, and uh, so you like the decisions you make will vary greatly from someone else. So I guess I know I'm circling the question. There is not really a single uh, difficult point, but one thing I can say is. People see me. What challenged you? Tell me, like, what was difficult for you? Difficult, you know, building these boards. Um, just for example, I had one. I was, this is not the, I mean, before this, I had to build the founder edition board of, of the Ramal boards. And I basically, I had to do it by hand, one by one. And at best, it takes me to build a board like this, at best. And I'm experienced. I designed this. It takes me one hour uh, because I have to Excuse first. One hour is nothing for this. I mean, one hour. I but thought you were going to say like a week or something. No, one hour for this. But then if you have like, let's say, 100 boards which I did have to build by hand. So that's 100 hours. That's ideal conditions. Meaning Crazy. If I but have you have to, a microscope? like I do have the tools, yeah. yeah. I have all the tools. So I have to you know, put the board, put the components, then I have to do the reflowing, the sand process. And then after that's done, I have to do also some manual hand soldering. And then I have to check the board. Does it work or not? If it doesn't work, I have to go debug and I have to verify entirely A to Z and then package it. So Early on on the Ramal's journey, that was very difficult. And nobody sees these things. You know, they see me here talking, they see the good things, but they don't see the late yeah, nights that course. I spend working building these boards. And if this doesn't work, there is no one I can rely on. Meaning, I designed this. I should know. I can't go ask someone else. They wouldn't know. It's, yeah, it's you're design. responsible. It's your baby. Exactly. I'm responsible. And but you know, this is why I'm here to ask the right questions because I feel like entrepreneurs are only under the spotlight once they hit their success. But there's there is so long... much difficult in the like difficult times that you have to power through as an entrepreneur. It's not like it's not overnight. Again, people see you here talking. Oh, it's nice, but they don't see all the effort that take took to get to a position 100%. like this. 100%. Tell me, how do you define success? What's your definition of success? You know, the first thing that came to mind is peace of mind. Um, you know, I don't really care, or, or I need to care about, you know, making money to, to keep the business going, but mm -hmm. I enjoy Ramal. Ramal is something that's a, a part of me, regardless of if I make money or not. The, the core aspect of education and building these pieces of hardware is something that 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 mm -hmm. is just with me. Mm -hmm. So I think every entrepreneur is to be successful is you have a product that you enjoy working on, you're passionate about, and hopefully it also makes money. That's in fact to course. keep the business going. But of course, I think it's a, the piece of points number one. Uh, the world go around exactly. at the end of the day. But I like the fact that you didn't say that you know success equals money. That there's something more important, which is peace of mind. And you go to bed, you know, uh, in a calm state of mind, as you've said. Or, or at least, I mean, it's not uh, easy, but enjoying the business you do, enjoying exactly. the thing you you're actually building. A hundred percent. Up next, we have how do you stay motivated when things get tough? Oh. That's very difficult. I mean, not very difficult, but it's always a challenge, you know, because I have to work on Ramal regardless of, you know, good or bad days. Mm -hmm. um, again, what keeps me personally motivated is I enjoy working on these things. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I learn as I educate others. So at least for me personally, it's just a, it's just a passion. Just, it's just a uh, passion that keeps me going because I enjoy working on these things. That regardless internal of the energy. Exactly. Beautiful. Now you have to pick one card from here. And then answer the question after you read it from the card. It's Let's your go. entrepreneur Middle East trivia. Uh, is, uh, is one card or two? I, I think we just answered this. Let's go see. for it. Oh, who's winning the AI race, startups or big tech? Um, to be honest, what I see, I mean, I'm not too deep into AI, but I obviously I use it heavily. Um, who's the, the uh, it's the big guys that are winning. Because the big guys, uh, they 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 build the foundation, you know, mm -hmm. these these models, and they're this, the foundation. I mean, the software foundation, yeah, but yeah, exactly. They build the foundation, uh, you know, these models that they release, and then the startups use these models in their applications. And then, for example, I don't want to get too technical, but <laughs> so many startups were building their uh, business model being on, oh, you can talk to this app and do this uh, booking and whatever, and you can make these things much easier. However, the OpenAI just released uh, a way that you can talk to these apps without any special uh, or, or special platform or startup that, that you use. So with every major update that OpenAI does to their platform, many startups get basically wiped out because, I mean, of why would I use a startup? Because OpenAI, they, the guys that make the model are just also making these, these tools. So it's very challenging and uh, it's rapidly changing. It's changing so far. At least I'm glad in hardware in my space, it's not rapidly changing as much. Right. But in AI, it's every day is a new challenge. Right, so, right. I mean, I wish these startups the best. It's not easy. Exactly, exactly. And we we did hear that, you know, most of them do fail in the first couple of months, if not, I mean, probably if I'm not mistaken. Is, I mean, weeks, I guess. Yeah. yeah. In, in, in the new rapidly advancing AI system. Exactly. Uh, it's not easy. Yeah. But as you said, I mean, I think you have an incredible idea, an incredible product. 
And honestly, we wish you best of luck. I feel like uh, you're so passionate and, and motivated by what you do, and it's very great to see. Thank you very much. And uh, like to, again, Alhamdulillah, I'd like to thank Dubai Chamber of Digital Economy for the sponsorship and supporting Ramal to, to showcase, showcase us on a global scale. I'd like to thank you as well for the interview and having us. Thank you. Shukran. Thank, thank you. you.